Thanks for tuning into the market wrap. I'm here at Chavit Milvi and Nikki Mirchandani. And um, it was a day of trade that was filled with some bit of volatility, you have to admit, because the markets made an attempt at recovering and didn't quite reach break even point, but at a point of time, we're just down about half a percent or lower than that. And then kind of gave way in, in the last one, one and a half hours of trade. Quickly get the index up first on your screen and you will see what I'm talking about. Um, so about nearly a percent lower and 11,153 still some distance away from the 200 day moving average, but lost about 100 odd points. Um, IT, largely IT, uh, to an extent some pharma names. So essentially defensive stood to the fore. After a long time, we saw Airtel, actually not after a long time, the last one week, it's two days now that Airtel has tried to give a bit of a pullback and then succumb to some selling. But yeah, those are the names that did well. What didn't do well? Z Entertainment came off quite rapidly. Bharti Infratel, and I don't know if the belief is that at some point of time Airtel will sell stake or otherwise, but Infratel came off. The Adani Group stocks had a slightly iffy morning or after the afternoon today, and some auto names came off as well. And now, the, I don't know if the belief is that um, the renewed lockdown fears might actually bring about some issues, and as a result of which, some of these consumption led names came off. Uh, but it could be an interesting uh, next few weeks. Uh, bring up the broader end of the spectrum and the market breadth would have looked uh, uh, mixed, if you will. Um, it would probably have looked better than what it was looking in the town in the NASDAQ at the start of their trade yesterday. But about one is to four, you have to give it to the bears, firmly in control in the broader end of the markets. There were some odd winners, the likes of my Central Bank of India or Renuka Sugars. Deepak and I tried to exclude some selling pressure. Uh, and went up about 4%. At a point of time, it was down to about 782. So some of those stronger names corrected a bit, but came up. Blue Dot announced some price hikes or something, and that stock did okay. But look at the list of losers. JMM Fordler was a no-brainer, and we spoke about it today on trade setup. I won't be surprised if there's a 10% downtick tomorrow as well. But aside of that, like I said, Auto and Auto Angs had a slightly iffy day. So Jamna Auto came off 8.5. Trola Finance, big auto financier, came off. Tube Investments, some group, uh, some investments in the auto names. That one came off about 7.5. Some pharma names, the likes of JB Chemical, etc., came off too. AP Apollo came off. A high-flying name in the last few days has come off too. So all in all, not the best of days uh, from a bull's perspective. But individual names shown through. And the IPO market was hot and thriving as well. Nikki's here with her synopsis on those. Nikki, good afternoon. And uh, some of your metal names also were in focus, but it's interesting how some of the stocks are shaping up. Yeah, I'm going to start off with JSPL because that was, was clearly one interesting bet. In the morning itself, the stock lost as much as 8.5%. As you know, later there was a MOEF notification which said that Sarga Mines at this point needs to stop the kind of operations. On account of that, you saw some amount of uh, profit booking coming in on JSPL. Uh, it said that the operations won't be affected. In the written response to BQ, though, JSPL said that Sarga Mines would uh, likely appeal the order. The difference There is a difference in sense of uh, interpretation of the order at this point of time. Uh, nevertheless, they have... Uh, some amount of inventory which is parked there, which they can move. There is no time limit to that movement out there, but then they have the required permission. On account of the clarification which came in later part of the day, the stock did rebound from the 8.5% downtick that we saw sharp at around 9.30-9.45 level and end of the day lower around 2.5-3% uh, uh, odd cuts there for JSPL. Spark, uh, on the other hand, was... Uh, you know, it rallied as much as 4.5% in trade today. It received an exclusive license coming in for commercialization of Ellipsia uh, XR 1500 MG tablets and 1000 MG tablets. That was an exclusive license which came in for the company. Uh, and that particularly augured well for this counter. I'm sure you've spoken in brief and in detail about GMM uh, Fordler of how the stock took a beating in today's stock uh, count, you know, in today's trade, 10.5% kind of downtick after the promoter decided to uh, you know sell up to 28% stake through an OFS the floor price was 33% discount as compared to uh, monday closing price but there were a lot of short positions which were standing in the uh, the slb segment yesterday on account of which you also saw some amount of profit booking coming in in today's account in today's trade and last in the list we have alkaline uh, you know alkaline mines where at one point of time it was the top 
uh, loser that we had on Nifty 500. Now, neither should break on the fact that the stock in particular has done extremely well when it comes to the whole lockdown period. In the last two trading sessions, there has been a hit which is coming in. Uh, today, you had the development of CFO resignation coming in for the counter, but then otherwise, it's been a good run for this counter. Um, Neeraj, I'm going to come back to you and ask you about the IPO updates. What do you make out of this, you know, the IPO process, uh, CAMS IPO, and you have ChemCon, uh, Angel Broking, all of them have a decent amount of subscription coming in. What do you make out of it? I mean, the, the going from the conversations of the management, Nikki, is good. So that is one thing. I mean, Angel Broking today spoke to us and they spoke about growth base looking robust. Kimbon uh, subscription numbers have looked okay. CAMS IPO, 15% CAGR growth for the next few years. So all of that really seems okay. Question is, will um, this frenzy um, and the kind of subscription that we've seen in Happiest and Root will get replicated? Difficult to say. I think those were probably niche businesses, right, Nikki? These are not niche businesses in that sense. And maybe uh, that might actually define the kind of subscription. But, okay, I'll um, let me add one here. If I can just ask uh, this one, because out of the three IPO subscription that we have, probably Kemcon speciality seems to be gathering some amount of traction. Uh, out of the three, uh, I'm not asking you to pick and choose, but then where do you see the fundamental business to be a little more niche as compared to the others, if I may ask? I think the, the difference seems to be, Nikki, that uh, camps, for example, is that ideal platform business, right? With, and everything related to mutual funds and equity markets, if you have a bit of a monopolistic hold on that piece, then it's kind of working well, and which is what we've seen in CDSL2 after a point of time. CDL just shot up. I'm not saying camps will do that, but it's a 70% market share in a two player market, wherein a third player is not going to come. Uh, so, if you're bullish on the mutual fund industry in India, you've got to be bullish on camps. So, that is one. Uh, Kembon, uh, we yet to speak to the management, so don't quite know, but angel broking seemed interesting too with the kind of growth that brokers have seen. So, uh, interesting names for sure. And uh, let's see if uh, they've left enough on the table for people to make money on listing as well, or even afterwards. Root one and uh, happiest minds, of course, haven't quite disappointed. So yeah, 100, 150% kind of uh, gains on the listing day clearly sets the bar rather too high for all the three IPOs that have just put the set in. I don't know, maybe uh, if you check the updates out there, Neeraj, you know, if you look at the CAMS IPO update, the last one that I checked at two, uh, the non-institutional investor subscription was around uh, 0 0.6 times and the retail was at 2.6 times. Uh, in Angel Broking, retail subscription was to an extent of 0 0.86 times and Chemcon, on the other hand, uh, had it to an extent of 16.11 times, just like to like comparison. So clearly, Kempon at this point of time seems to be doing well off the lot. Uh, well, very quickly, just the IPO, rather uh, the global market update, very, very quickly. And what they are showing, uh, they were looking OK, um, at least until midway through trade. For now, doing OK. Let's wait and watch if the US markets give us support. The futures were in the green. With that, it's a wrap. Uh, from Nikki and myself and the team that put this piece together. Thank you so much for watching this market wrap.